Perchance he is not drowned but feed you, Captain. It is perchance that you yourself were saved. Oh, my poor brother. And so perchance may he be. Aye, man, true. After our ship did split, when you and those four numbers saved me, hung on our driving boat, I saw your brother, most probably in peril, bind himself to a strong mast that lived upon the sea. For saying so, they're full. Knowest thou this country? Aye, madam, well. For I was bred and born not three hours travel from this very place. Who governs here? A noble duke, in nature and in name. What is the name? Orsino. Orsino? I've heard my father name him. He was a bachelor then. And so is now, or was so very late. For about a month ago I came from hence, and then was fresh and murmured, as you know, what the great ones do, the less will crack them. That he did seek the fair love to do. What's she? A virtuous maid, the daughter of the captain, who has died some twelve months, twelve months since. Oh, then I'll serve that lady who might not be delivered to the world till I have made my own occasion that will what my estate is. And for a heart of comforts, she will admit no kind of suit. Not even a goose. There is a fair behavior in thee, Captain. I prithee, and I'll pay thee bounteously, conceal me what I am, and be my aid for such disguise as happily shall become the form of my intent. I'll serve this Duke. Thou shalt present me as an eunuch to him. It may be worth thy pains, only shape thou thy silence to my wit. Be you his eunuch, and your mute shall be. My tongue laughs, then that my eye do not see. I thank thee, lead me on. once a day, her chamber round, with eye offending brine. All this, to season a father's dead love, which she would keep fresh and lasting in her sad remembrance. Oh, she that hath the heart of that fine frame, to pay this debt of love. But to a father, how may she love when the rich golden shaft hath killed the flock of all affections else that live in her, away before me, to sweet beds of flowers. Love thoughts lie rich when canopied with bowers.
with us. I'm sure it cares an enemy to light. By my troth, Sir Toby, you must come in earlier of nights. Your cousin, my lady, takes great exception to your ill hours. Why let her accept before accepted? Aye, but you must confine yourself within the modest limits of order. Confine? I shall confine myself no higher than I have. These clothes are good enough for drinking, and so be these two straight. That quaffing and drinking will undo you. I heard my lady talk of it yesterday, and of a foolish knight that you brought in one night here to be her wooer. Who, sir? And your agency? Ah, he. Well, he is as tall a man as any other. What's that to the purpose? He has 3,000 ducats a year. Aye, but he'll have but a year in all these ducats. He's a very fool and a prodigal. Why did you say so? For he plays on the viol de d'Amboise, speaks three or four languages, word for word, without book, and have all the good gifts of nature. He hath indeed almost natural. For beside that he's a fool, he's a great quarreler. But that he hath the gift of a coward. Tis thought it won't be true to quickly have the gift of a grave. By this hand they are scoundrels and subtractors that say so of him. Who are they? They that add, moreover, he's drunk nightly in your company. With drinking helps to my niece. I will drink to her as long as there's a passage in my throat and drink in the area. He's a coward and a coisal that will not drink to my knees till his brains turn on the toll like a parasol. What went? Castiliano Burgo, for your ghost around your in your face. Uh, sweet Sir Toby Bell, child now, <laughs> Sir Toby Bell. Oh, sweet Sir Andrew. Bless you, fair shoe. And you too, sir. A poster, Andrew. Lost. What's that? My niece's chambermaid. <laughs> Good mistress of cost, I desire better acquaintance. My name is Fabian, <laughs> sir. Good mistress Fabian, of cost, I. <laughs> Thou art mistaken, knight. A cost is, um, drunk her, bore her, woo her. A sailor. By my troth, I will not undertake her in this company. Is that the meaning of a cost? Fare you well, gentlemen. And thou let's part so surrender, would thou might never draw sword again. And you quite so, mistress, I would I might never draw sword again. Fair lady, do you think you have fools in hand? <laughs> Sir, I am not you by the hand. Why, Mary, you shall renew my hand. Now, sir. Thought is free. I pray you bring your hand to the buttery bar and let it drink. Your poor sweetheart? What's your metaphor? It's a dry, sir. Why, I think so. I am not such an ass but to keep my hand dry. But what's your jest? A dry jest, sir. Are you full of it? Aye, I have them at my fingers' ends. Mary, now, I let go of your hand. I am barren. A <laughs> <laughs> oh, knight, thou lackest a cup of canary. When did I see thee so put down? Never in my life, I think, unless you see a canary put me down. Me think sometimes I have no more wit than a Christian or an ordinary man has. <coughs> but I am a great eater of beef, and I believe that's harm to my wit. <laughs> no question. And I thought that, I'll forswear it. I'll ride home tomorrow, Sir Toby. Pourquoi, dear knight? What is pourquoi? If you were not to do, I would had I bestowed that time in the tongues that I had in fencing, dancing, bear baiting. Oh, had I followed the arts. Oh, then hadst thou had an excellent head of hair. Why? Would I have mended my hair? Past question, for thou seest it will not curl by nature. But it becomes me well enough, does it not? Excellent. It hangs like flax on a distaff, and I hope to see a housewife take thee between her legs and spin it off. Babe, <laughs> I'll ride home tomorrow, Sir Toby. Your niece will not be seen, or if she be, it's four to one. She'll have none of me. The Count himself here hard by woos her. She'll not have a Count. She'll not match above her degree, neither in estate years nor wit. I've heard her swear it. Twit, there's life in it now. I'll stay a month longer. I am a fellow of the strangest minds in the world. I delight in masks and revels, sometimes all together. Oh, art thou good at these 
kick shows, right? As any man in Illyria, whatsoever he be, under degrees of my betters, and yet I will not compare with an old man. Oh, what is that excellence in a gallery of night? Faith, I can cut a caper. Well, I've cut the mutton to it. I think I have the back of As simply as strong as any man in Illyria. Wherefore are these things hid? Wherefore hath these gifts a curtain before him? I did think by the excellent constitution of thy leg it was formed under the star of a galliard. Aye, tis strong, oh. and does it differ well in a flame colored stock. Shall we set about some revels? What shall we do else? Were we not born under Taurus? Taurus! That's sides and heart. That's legs and thighs, knight. Let me see the caper. Fire! Hey! Excellent! Continue these favors towards you, Cesario. You are like to be much advanced. He hath known you but thirty days, and already you are no stranger. You either fear his humor or my negligence that you call in question the continuance of his love. Is he inconstant, sir, in his favor? No, believe me. I thank thee. Here comes the Duke. Who saw Cesario home? On your attendance, my lord, here. Cesario. I have unclasped to thee the book, even of my secret soul. Therefore, good youth, address thy gate not to her. Be not denied access. Stand at her doors and tell them there thy fixed foot shall grow till thou have audience. Say I do speak with her, my lord. What then? Oh, then unfold the passion of my loves. Surprise her with discourse of my dear faith. Will become thee well, for act, my lord, shall attend it better in thy youth. I think not so, my lord. Dear lad, believe it, for they shall yet belie the happy years that say thou art the man. Diana's lip is not more smooth and rubious. Thy small pipe is as the maiden's organ, <laughs> shrill and sound, and all is sensitive a woman's part. I know the constellations right after this affair. Prosper well in this, and thou shalt live as freely as thy lord, to call his fortunes thine. I'll do my best to your lady, my lord. <laughs> Yet a barful strife, whoe'er I woo, myself would be his wife. My lady will hang thee for thy absence. Let her hang me. He that is well hanged in this world needs to fear no colors. Make that good. He shall see none to fear. A good let an answer. I can tell thee where the same was born, I fear no colors. Where did Mistress Mary? In the wars. And that may be so bold to say in your foolery. Well, God give them wisdom that hath, and those that are fools let them use their talents. Yet you will be hanged for being so long absent. Many a good hanging prevents a bad marriage. You are resolute then? Not so neither. But I am resolved on two points. That if one break, the other will hold, or if both break, <laughs> your gaskets fall. Apt in good faith. Very apt. Well, go thy way. If Sir Toby would leave drinking, thou wert as witty a piece of Eve's flesh as any in Illyria. Peace, you rogue, no more of that. 
Here comes my lady. You are best make your excuse wisely. Oh, wit, it be thy will, put me into good fooling. For what says Quinapolis, better of witty fool than a foolish wit? God bless thee, lady. Take the fool away. Do you not hear, yeah. fellow? Take away the lady. <laughs> Go to your dry fool. Oh, no more. Besides, you grow dishonest to no fox, Madonna, that drink and good counsel will amend. For if the dry fool drinks, then is the fool not dry. Bid the dishonest man mend himself. He is no longer dishonest. If that this simple syllogism will serve. So, if it will not, what remedy? The lady may take away the fool. Therefore, I say again, take her away. Sir, I bade them take away you, Miss Prishen, in the highest degree. Lady, cuculus non facit monachum. That is much to say if I wear not motley in my brain. Good Madonna, give me leave to prove you a fool. For lack of other idleness, I'll bide your fool. Good, my mouse of virtue, answer me. Why mournest thou? Good fool for my father's death. I think his soul is in hell, Madonna. I know his soul is in heaven, fool. The more fool, Madonna, the more for your father's soul be in heaven. Take away the fool, gentlemen. <laughs> what did you of this fool, Malavolia? Doth he not mend? Yes, and shall do till the pangs of death shake him. Infirmity, that became the wise that ever make, the better fool. God send you, sir, a speedy infirmity for the better increasing your folly. Sir Toby will be sworn, but I am no fault. But he will not pass a word for two pence that you are no fool. What say you to that, Marvolio? I marvel your ladyship takes delight in such a barren rascal. I saw him put down the other day by an ordinary fool that has no more brain than a stone. I protest. I take these wise men that crow so at these said kind of fools, no better than the fool veins. Oh, you are sick of self-love, Malvolio, and have a taste for distempered appetite. There is no slander in an allowed fool, though he do nothing but rail. Now, Mercury, and do thee with me think for thou speakest well of fools. Madam, there is at the gate a young gentleman much desired to speak to you. Oh, from the Count Orsino, is it? I know not. Tis a fair young man and well attended. Who of my people hold him in delay? Sir Toby, oh. madam, your kinsman. Fetch him all by praise. Go you, Malvolio. If it be a suit from the Count, I am sick or not at home. What do you will to dismiss it? Ha. Now you see, sir, how your fooling grows old and people dislike it. Thou hast spoke for us, Madonna, as if thy own son should be a fool. Whose skull, Joe, a crab with brains. For here he comes. One of thy king has the most weak theater. By mine honor, and half drunk. What is he at the gate, cousin? A gentleman. <laughs> a gentleman? What gentleman? There's a gentleman here. <laughs> oh, the plague of these pickled hairy. How now, son? Good Sir Toby. Cousin. Cousin, how have you come so early by this lethargy? Lechery! I defy a lechery. <laughs> There's one at the gate. I marry. What is he? Let him be the devil in here, well, I care not. Well, oh, give me some faith, and I. Well, that's all I. <laughs> <laughs> what is a drunken man like? Like a drowned man, a fool and a madman. One draft above heat makes him a fool. The second mads him, and the third drowns him. He's in the third degree of drink. He's drowned. Go look after him. He is but mad yet, Madonna, and the fool shall look to the madman. Madam, yon young fellow swears he will speak to you. I told him you were sick. He takes on to understand so much and therefore comes to speak with you. I told him you were asleep. He seems to have a foreknowledge of this too and therefore comes to speak with you. What is to be said to him, lady? He's fortified against any denial. Tell him he shall not speak with you. Has been told so. 
but he says he'll stand at your door like a sheriff's post and be the supporter to a bench, but he'll speak to you. What kind of man is he? Why, of mankind? What manner of man? <laughs> Very ill, man. What years and personage? Not yet old enough for a man, nor young enough for a boy. He's very well favored and speaks very shrewishly. One would think his mother's milk was scarce out of him. Let him approach. Call in my gentlewomen. Gentlewomen, my lady calls. Give me my veil, come. Throw it over my face. We'll once more hear Orsino down the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> the honorable lady of the house, which is she? Speak to me and I will answer for her. You will. <clears throat> Most radiant, exquisite, and unmatchable beauty. <laughs> I pray you tell me to see the lady of the house, for I never saw her. I would be loath to cast away my speech, for besides that it is excellently well penned, I have taken great pains to con it. Whence came you, sir? I can say little more than I have studied, and that question is out of my part. Good gentle one, give me modest assurance, if you be the lady of the house, that I may proceed in my speech. Are you a comedian? You no, know my profound <laughs> part. And yet I am not what I say. Are you the lady of the house? If I do not usurp myself, I am. Oh, certain you do usurp yourself. For what is yours to bestow is not yours to reserve. But this is from my commission. I will on with my speech in your praise and show you the heart of my message. On with what is important in it. I forgive you the praise. Alas, I took great pains to study it, and tis poetical. Tis the more like you think. I heard you were saucy at my gate. If you be not mad, be gone. Will you hoist sail, sir? Here lies your way. No, good swabber. I am to hull here a little longer. Some nullification for your giant, sweet lady. Hmm. Tell me your mind. I am a messenger. Come to what is important. Speak your office. If you have reasons, be brief. Tis not the time of moon with me in so skipping a dialogue. It alone concerns your ear. I bring no overture of war, no taxation of homage. I hold the olive in my hand. Yet you began rude. What are you, what would you? The rudeness that hath appeared in me have I learned from my entertainment. What I am and what I would are as secret as maidenhead. To your ears, divinity. To any others profanation. Oh. Give us the place alone. We shall hear this divinity. <laughs> <clears throat> now, sir, what is your text? <clears throat> Most comfortable doctrine and much may be said of it. Where lies your text? In Orsino's bosom. <laughs> In his bosom. What chapter is it? Oh, chance by the method in the first of his heart. Oh, I have read it. It is heresy. Have you no more to say? Good man, let me see your face. Have you any commission from your lord to negotiate with my face? <laughs> you are out of your text. But we will draw the curtain and show you the picture. Look you, sir, such a one I was this present. Is it not well done? Excellently done. If God hear all. Tis in grain, sir. Twill in your wind and weather. Tis beauty truly blent, whose red and white nature's own sweet and cunning hand laid on. Lady, you are the cruelest she alive if you will leave these races to the grave and leave the world no copy. Oh, I will not be so hard hearted. I will give out divers schedules of my beauty. It shall be inventoried in every particle and utensil labeled to my will. As item, two gray eyes with wits to them. Item, two lips in different red. Item, 
one chin, one neck, and so forth. Were you sent hither to praise me? I see you what you are. You are too proud. But you are the devil, you are fair. My lord and master loves you. Oh, such love could be but recompense, though you were crowned the non corral of beauty. How does he love me? <clears throat> with adorations, fertile tears, with groans that thunder love, with sighs of fire. Your lord does know my mind, I cannot help him. Those who post him virtuous know him noble, of great estate, tree free, learned and valiant. Yet I cannot love him. He could have taken his answer long ago. If I did love you in my master's flame, in your denial I would find no sense. I would not understand it. Why? What would you? Make me a willow cabin at your gate. And call upon my soul within the house. Write loyal cantons of contemned love and sing them loud, even in the dead of night. Hello, your name to the reverberate hill, and make the babbling gossip of air cry out, Olivia! Olivia. Olivia. Oh, you should not rest between the elements of air and earth. But you should pity me. You are. <laughs> What is your parentage? Above my fortunes, yet my estate as well. I am a gentleman. Get you to your lord. Let him send no more. I cannot love him. Unless, perchance, you may come to me again to tell me how he takes it. Fare thee well. I thank thee for your pains. <clears throat> Spend this for me. I am no feed post, lady. Keep your purse. My master, not myself, lacks recompense. Farewell, fair cruelty. What is your parentage? Above my fortunes, yet my state as well. I am a gentleman. I'll be sworn thou art. Thy tongue, thy face, thy limbs, actions and spirits, do give thee fivefold bleeding, not to fast. Soft, soft, unless the master were the man. How now? May one so quickly catch the plague? Methinks I feel the cute perfection to creep in at my eyes with an invisible and subtle stealth. Well, let it be. What ho, Malvolio! Here, madam. I your service. Run after that same peevish messenger. He left this ring with me. Would I or not, I'll learn it. Desire him not to flatter with his lord, nor hold him up with hopes. I am not for him. If that the youth come this way again tomorrow, I'll give him reasons for it. Hide thee, Malvolio. Madam, I will. <laughs> I do, I know not what. And fear to find mine eye to bring flatter for thy mind. Or art you even now with the Count of Olivia? Faith, show thy force even now, sir. Ourselves, we do not know. Oh, where is this ring, sir? What is decreed must be, and be this so.
but I perceive in you so excellent a touch of modesty that you will not extort from me what I am willing to even. Therefore, it charges me to express myself. You must know me then, Antonio. My name is Sebastian. My father was that Sebastian of Mesoline, whom I know you have heard of. He left behind him myself and a sister, both born in an hour. May the heavens have been so pleased with have ended. You, sir, all to that. So how before you took me from the breaches of the sea was my sister drowned. Alas, the day. The lady, sir. Though it was said much resembled me, was of many accounted beautiful. She bore a mind that envy could not but call fair. She is drowned already, sir, with salt water. Though I seem to drown in her remembrance again with more. Pardon me, sir, your bad entertainment. I could have told you. Forgive me your trouble. If you will not murder me for your love, let me be your servant. You will not undo what you have done, that is kill him whom you have recovered. Desire it not. Fare you well at once. I am bound for the Count Orsino's court. Very well. The gentleness of all the gods go with thee. I have many enemies in Orsino's court, else would I very shortly see thee there. But come with me. I do adore thee so. That danger shall seem sport, and I will go. Fare thee well. I thank you for your pain. Spend this for me. I am no fee post lady. Keep your purse. My master, not myself, lacks recompense. Farewell, fair cruelty. What ho, my bono! you even now with the Countess Olivia? Even now, sir. She returns this ring to you, sir. Might have taken my pains to have taken it away yourself. She adds, moreover, that you should put your lord into a desperate assurance she will none of him. And one more thing, that you should never be so hardy to come again in his affairs, unless it be to report your lord's taking of this. Receive it so. She took no ring of me, all none of it. Come, sir. You peevishly threw it to her, and her will is it should be so returned. If it be worth stooping for, there it lies in your eye. If not, be it his who finds it. I left no ring with her. <laughs> what means this lady? Fortune forbid my outside have not charmed her. She made good view of me. Indeed, so much that sure methought her eyes had lost her tongue. For she did speak and start distractedly. She loves me, sure. <laughs> the cunning of her passion invites me in this churlish messenger. None of my lord's ring, why he sent her none. I am the man, if it be so as tis. Poor lady, she were better love a dream. <laughs> Besides, I see thou art of wickedness, wherein the pregnant enemy does much. How easy is it for the proper false in women's waxen hearts to set their forms? Alas, our frailty is the cause, not we. How will this fadge? My lord and master loves her dearly, and I, poor monster, fond as much on him, and she mistaken seems to dote on me. As I am man, my state is desperate for my master's love. As I am woman, now alas the day. What thriftless sigh shall poor Lydia breathe? O oh, time, thou must untangle it, not I. It's too hard of a knot for me to untie.
approach, Sir Andrew. Not to be a man after midnight is to be up at times. And you look all so jealous, are you? I trust I know not. But I know to be up late is to be up late. What a false conclusion. I hate it as an uncle can. To be up after midnight and to go to bed then is early. So to go to bed after midnight is to be up at times. <laughs> Does not like what this of the poor little bit true. So they say, I think it rather consists of eating and drinking. Ah, no art scholar. Let us therefore eat and drink. All right, I say, a scoop of wine. Bah, bah. Here comes the fooling oh. face. Oh. How now, my hearts? Did you never see the picture of we three? Oh, welcome, ass. A little catch. Three merry men and three merry men and three merry men be we. <laughs> By my straw, the fool has an excellent breast. I had rather forty shillings I had such a leg, and so sweet a breath as to sing as the fool has. In sooth, thou was a very gracious fooling last night, when thou spokest a pigger or mightus of the vapians passing through the Acrian Nocturne of Quavis. It was very good in faith. I sent thee sixpence for thy leaving. Hadst it? I did impeticose thy gratility, for Malvolio's nose is no whipstock. My lady has a white hand, and the myrmidons are no bottle ale houses. Excellent! Why, this is the best fooling. When all is done, now a song. Oh, oh, oh. Come. There's sixpence. Now let's have a song. Hey. Ooh. Hey. There's a test of me, too, if one may do that. Would you have a love song or a song oh, for good life? A love song. A love song. I, I care not for good life. Mellifluous voice, as I am true knight. Contagious <laughs> breath. Very sweet and contagious in faith. Here by the notes it is, dulcet and contagion. Oh. But shall we make a welcome dance indeed? 
Shall we rouse the night owl in one catch that will draw three souls out of one weaver? <laughs> Shall we not do that? And you love me, let's do it. Ooh. I'm a dog at a catch. By your lady, sir, and some dogs will catch well. <laughs> Most certainly. <laughs> Let our catch be thou may. Hold thy peace, thou knave knight. I shall be constrained in it to call thee knave knight. It's not the first time I constrain one to call me knave. Hmm. Begin, fool. It begins. Hold thy peace. Oh, I shall never begin if I hold my peace. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Come, begin. Ho, but he's thou nay. 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 Malvolio, and bid him turn you out of doors, never trust me. My lady's a Catayan. We are politicians. <laughs> Malvolio's a beggar Ramsey. And be merry men be we. <laughs> Am I not consanguineous? Am I not of our blood? Chilly Valley lady. <laughs> I do just well enough, you be disposed, and so do I too. He does it with a better grace, but I do it more naturally. <laughs> <laughs> Are you mad? <laughs> what are you? Have you no wit? Mad is not honesty. Like the gathering I took at the time of night. Do you make an alehouse of my lady's house? Is there no respect for place, persons, nor time in you? We did keep time, sir. In our catches. <laughs> <laughs> bah, snake <off. laughs> Sir Toby, I must be round with you. My lady bade me tell you that, though she harbors you as her kinsman, she has nothing alive to your disorders. If you can separate yourself and your misdemeanors, you are welcome to the house. If not, she is very willing to bid you farewell. <laughs> farewell, dear heart, hey, since Toby. I must needs be gone. His eyes do show. But I will never die. My dear Sir Toby, there you lie. Shall you bid him, bid him go? What? And if I do, I do. Shall I bid him go? Dost thou think just because thou art virtuous there shall be no more cakes and ale? Yes, by Saint Anne, and ginger shall be hot in the mouth too. Thou art in the right. Go, sir, rub your chain with crumbs. <laughs> Mistress Mary, if you prize my lady's favor as anything more than contempt, you wouldn't give means for the son's civil rule. <laughs> you shall know this. Fight his hand. <laughs> Go shake your ears! Tour as good a deed as to drink. When a man's a hungry, you challenge him the field and then break promise with him and make a fool of him. George, I'll break your charge, or 
Oh, there you go, the indignation of my word of mouth. Sweet Sir Toby, be patient for tonight. Is the youth of the count was today with thy lady? She is much out of quiet. For Monsieur Malvolio, let me alone with him. If I do not make him a common recreation, do not think I have wit enough to lie straight in my bed. Hmm. Possess us. Possess us. Tell us something of him. Mary, sir, sometimes he's a kind of Puritan. Oh, if I thought that, I'd beat him like a dog. What, for being a Puritan? That exquisite reason, your name. I have no exquisite reason, but I have reason good enough. The devil a Puritan that he is, or anything constantly, but a time pleaser. An affectionate ass that can't say without both and utters it by great swarts. The best persuaded of himself, so crammed as he thinks with excellencies, that it is his ground of faith that all that look on him, love him. And on that vice in him will my revenge find notable cause to work. What wilt thou do? I can write very like my lady, your niece. Hmm. On a forgotten matter, she can hardly make distinction of our hands. We will drop in his way some obscure epistles of love, wherein by the color of his beard, the matter of his gait, the shape of his leg, the expression of his eye, forehead, and complexion, he shall find himself most familiarly personated. Oh, I smell a device. <laughs> I have it in my nose, too. <laughs> he shall think by your letter but that, that thou will drop it, if they come from my niece. My purpose is indeed a horse of that color. And your horse now will make him an ass? Ass? I doubt not. Oh, it will be admirable. <laughs> Sports royal, I warrant you. I know my physic will work with it. I will plant you three and let the fool make a fourth, where he shall find this letter. Observe his construction of it. For this night, to bed and dream on the event. Farewell. Oh. <laughs> 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 Before me, she's a good wench. She's a big old true bread. And what that adores me, what a laugh. <laughs> I was adored once too. <laughs> <laughs> That's too bad, knight. Thou hadst need send for more money. If I cannot recover your niece, I'm a foul way out. Send for money, man! If thou hast her not in the end, call me cut. If I do not, never trust me. Take it all you will. Come, come, hey. I'll go burn some sack. It's too late to go to bed now. Go. <laughs> Seek him out and play the tune to one. Come hither, boy. If ever thou shalt love in the sweet pangs of it, remember me, for such as I am, all true lovers are, unscathed and skittish. In all motions else save in the constant image of the creature that is beloved. Oh, fellow, come. That song we had last night. Mark it, says Aaron. It's old and plain. It's silly, soup, and dallied with the innocence of love. Like an old age. Are you ready, sir? I pretty sing. 
Give me now leave to leave thee. Now the melancholy god protect thee, and the tailor make thy doublet of changeable traffic. For thy mind is very open. I would have men of such constancy put to sea that their business might be everywhere, and their intent everywhere. <laughs> For that sin that always makes a good voyage of nothing. Farewell. Let all the rest give place. Once more, Cesario, get thee to yon same sovereign cruelty. Tell her my love more noble than the world prizes not what fortune hath bestowed on her, but tis that miracle and queen of gems that nature pranks her in attract my soul. But if she cannot love you, sir. I cannot be so answered. Soon, but you must. Say that some lady, as perhaps there is, hath for your love as great a pang of heart as you have for Olivia. And you cannot love her, you tell her so. 
Must she not then be answered? There is no woman's side can bide the beating of so strong a passion as love doth give my heart. Make no compare between that love a woman can bear me and that I owe Olivia. Aye, but I know. What does that mean? Do well. But love, women to men may owe. In faith, they are as true of heart as we. My father had a daughter. Love the man. As it might, perhaps, were I a woman, I should your lordship. And what? Her history? A blank, my lord. She never told her love, but let concealment like a worm in the bud feed on her damaged cheek. She sat like patience on a monument, smiling at grief. Was not this love indeed? But died thy sister of her love, my boy. And I am all the daughters of my father's house, and all the brothers. Sir, shall I to this lady? Ah, that's the theme. To her in haste. Give her this jewel. You say my love can give no place. By no denial. Velvet down, and I come from a day that I am left Olivia sleeping, fire and brimstone. Oh, peace, peace. And then for my kinsman, Toby. Oh, peace, peace. <laughs> so, of my people, we do not begin to start. Make out for him. I crown the while, and perchance wind up watch and play with my some rich jewel. Who he approaches? 
courtesies there. To me, shall they spend all day? Though our silence be drawn from us with cars, yet peace. I extend my hand to him, thus quenching my familiar smile. And us to we not blow your one on the lips then? Say, cousin Toby, my fortunes are being cast me on your knees. Give me this prerogative of speech. What? You must amend your drunkenness. Don't scab. Okay, patience. Bring the sinews of our cloth. Besides, you waste the treasures of your time with a foolish knight. That's me, I want you. One, Sir Andrew. My youth was I for many to call me fool. <laughs> What employment have we here? Now is the woodcock near the gin. Beast, and the spirit of humor into me. Reading aloud to him. By my life, this is my lady's hand. Why, this be her very seat, her use, her ends, and her teeth. <laughs> and thus she makes her great fees. It is in contempt of question her hand. Her seeds, her use, her ends, her teeth. Why that? <laughs> the unknown beloved. This and my good wishes. Her very phrases. <laughs> By your leave, wax, soft, and the impression of her lucrece with which she uses to seal. Tis my lady. To whom should this be? This wins him liver and all. Jove knows I love, but who? Lips do not move. No man must know. No man must know. What follows? The numbers alter. No man must know. If this should be thee, Malvolio? Mary Henry Brock. I may command where I adore, but silence, like a Lucrece knight, with bloodless stroke, my heart doth gore. F O A I doth sway my life. Buster riddle. M O A I doth sway my life. Nay, but first, let me see. Let me see, let me see. What do the poison? What should this alphabetical position portend? If I can make that resemble something in me. Softly. M-O-A-I. Oh, I make of that. He is now a cold scent. M. Malolio! <laughs> M! Why, that begins my name? Did not I say you would work it out? The is excellent at both. M! Oh, but there is no consonancy in the sequel. That suffers under probation. A should follow. But O does. And O shall end, I hope. Ah, you're all cudgel him and make him cry. And then I comes behind. Ah, and you had any eye behind you. You might see more detraction at your heels than fortunes before you. M O A I. This simulation is not as the former. And yet, to crush this a little, it would bow to me. Every one of these letters are in my name. <laughs> <laughs> Soft. Here follows prose. If this fall into thy hand, revolve. In my stars, I am above thee. But be not afraid of greatness. Some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrust upon them. And to inure thyself to what thou art like to be. Cast thy humble slough, and appear fresh. Be opposite with a kinsman, so with servants. Let thy tongue tang arguments of state. Put thyself into the trick of singularity. She thus advises thee, that sighs for thee. Remember who commended thy yellow stockings. And wish to see thee ever cross carter. I say, remember, go to, thou art made if thou desires to be so. If not, let me see thee a steward still, the fellow of servants, and not worthy to touch fortune's fingers. Farewell. She that will alter services with thee, the fortunate, unhappy. Daylight and champagne discovers one more. This is open. I will be proud. I will read politic authors. I will baffle Sir Toby. I will wash off gross acquaintance. I will be point of eyes, the very man. I do not now fool myself to let imagination jade me, for every reason excites to this. Hath my lady loves me. She did commend my yellow stockings of late, and praise my leg being cross guarded and in this she manifests herself to my love, and with a kind of injunction drives me to these habits of her liking. I thank my stars, I am happy. <laughs> I will be strange, stout, in yellow stockings, and cross guarded 
even with the swiftness of putting off. Show me my stars, be praised. <laughs> Here's yet the postscript. Thou canst not choose, but know who I am. If thou entertainest my love, let it appear in thy smile. Thy smiles become thee well. Therefore, in my presence, Still smile, still smile, dear my sweet, I prithee. I prithee. Joe, I thank thee. I will smile. King lies by a beggar. If a beggar fell near him. You have said, sir, to see this age. A sentence is but a chevril bluff to a good wit. How quickly the wrong side may be turned outward. Nay, that's certain. They that dolly nicely with words may quickly make them want. I would, therefore, my sister had had no name, sir. Why, man? Why, sir, her name's a word. And to dally with that word might make my sister wanton. I warrant. Thou art a merry fellow and carest for nothing. Not so, sir. I do care for something. But in my conscience, sir, I do not care for you. If that be to care for nothing, sir, I would. It would make you invisible. Art not thou the Lady Olivia at school? No, indeed, sir. The Lady Olivia has no folly. She will keep no fool till she be married. I'm indeed not a fool, but a corrupter of words. I saw thee late at the Count Ortino. Foolery, sir. It shines everywhere. I would be sorry, sir, but fool should be as oft with your master as with my mistress. I think I saw your wisdom there. Nay, and thou pass upon me, I'll no more with thee. Hold. There's expense for thee. Now, Job, in his next commodity of hair, send thee a beard. By my troth, I'll tell thee, I'm a little sick for one. Though I would not have it grow on my chin. Ah! Uh, <coughs> <laughs> would not a pair of these have bread, sir? Yes being kept together and put to use. I would play Lord Pandarus of Phrygia to bring a Cressida to this Troilus. I understand you, sir. Tis well begged. My lady is within, sir. I will construe them whence you come. Who you are and what you would are out of my welkin. I might say element, but the word is overworn. This fellow was wise enough to play the fool. And to do that well, very kind of wit. He must observe their mood whom he jests, the quality of person, and the time, and check at every feather that comes before his eye. This is a practice as full of labor as a wise man's art, for folly that he wisely shows is fit. But wise men, for folly of folly, quite taint their wit. Save it, gentlemen. And you, sir. Will you encounter the house? Dieu vous garde, monsieur. Et vous aussi, votre serviteur. <laughs> 
I hope, sir, you are, and I am yours. My niece is desirous you should enter, if your trade be to her. I am bound to your niece, sir. Oh. I mean, she is the lift of my voyage. Taste your legs, put them to motion. My legs do better understand me, sir, than I understand what you mean by bidding me taste my legs. I mean to go, sir, to enter. I will answer you with gate and entrance. But we are prevented. Most radiant, accomplished lady, the heavens rain odors on you. <laughs> Do you, sir, approach you? Odors rain well. My matter hath no voice to your own most pregnant and vouchsafe ear. Odors? Pregnant? Vouchsafe? I'll get them all through already. Let the garden door be shut and leave me to my hearing. <laughs> Give me your hand, sir. My duty, madam, and most humble service. What is your name? Cesario is your servant's name, fair princess. My servant? Your servant to the Count Orsino, you mean. And he is yours, and his must needs be yours. Your servant's servant is your servant, madam. For him I think not honorably. For his thoughts, when they were blank rather than filled with me. Madam, I come to wet your general thoughts on his behalf. Oh, by your leave, I pray you, I bade you never speak of him again. But would you undertake another seat? I'd rather you to solicit that than music from me. Dear lady, give me leave. Beseech you. I sent after the last enchantment you did hear. A ring in chase of you. So, did I abuse myself, my servant, and I fear me you? Under your hard construction, my bastard, to force on you that shameful cunning which you knew none of yours. What might you think? Have you not set mine honor at the stake and baited it with all the unmuzzled thoughts the tyrannous heart can think? To one of your receiving enough to show a cypher not a bosom height of my heart. So what might you say? I pity you. And that's a digger to love. No, not a prize. For it is vulgar proof that very oft we pity enemies. Oh, anything but time to smile to them. Oh, world, how apt in a poor art to be proud. One should be afraid. How much the better to fall before the lion and the wolf. The clock upbraids me with the waste of time. Be not afraid of you, thou none of you. There lies your way due west. And then westward ho. A grace and good disposition attend your ladyship. You'll nothing, madam, to my lord by me. <laughs> Stay! <laughs> I pray thee, tell me what thou thinkest of me. That you do think you are not what you are. If I think so, I think the same of you. Then think you right. I'm not what I am. I would you were as I would have you be. Would it be better, madam, than I am? I wish it might, for now I am your fool. Oh, what a deal of scorn looks beautiful in the anger and contempt of his look. A murderous guilt shows not itself more soon than love that would seem hid. Love's night is noon. Cesario, by the roses of the spring, by maidenhood, honor, truth, and everything, I love thee so that longer all thy pride. Nor wit nor reason can my passion hide. By innocence, I swear, and by my youth. I have one heart, one bosom, and one truth, and that no woman has, nor never man, shall mistress be of it, save I alone. And so, adieu, good madam. Nevermore will I my master's tears to you deplore. Yet come again tomorrow. 
perhaps may smooth the heart which now pours delight in his love. <laughs> judgment and reason. She did show favor to the youth in your sight, only to exasperate you, to awake your dormouse valor, to put fire in your heart and brimstone in your liver. You should have then accosted her, and with some excellent jests, fire you from the mint, you should have banged the youth into dumbness. This was looked for at your hand, and this was bought. The double guilt of this opportunity you let time wash off. And you're now sailed into the north of my lady's opinion, where you will hang like an icicle in a Dutchman's beard. <laughs> Unless you do redeem it by some laudable attempt either of valor or policy. Anyway, it must be with valor, for policy I hate. Why then build me thy fortunes on the basis of valor? Challenge me the Count's youth to fight with him. Heard him in eleven places. Mm -hmm. My niece shall take note of it. There is no way but this surrendering. Will either of you bear me the challenge to him? Go. Write it in martial hand. Be cursed and brave. Taunt him with a license of ink. And as many lies as lie in thy sheet of paper. Set it down. Go. About it. Where shall I find you? We'll call the other cubiculo. I have been dear to him, lass, some two thousand strong or so. We shall have a rare letter from him, but you'll not deliver it. Oh, never trust me then. And by all means, stir the youth to an answer for Andrew if you are open, and you will find so much blood in his liver as will clog the foot of a flea. I'll eat the rest of the anatomy. <laughs> and his opposite, the youth. There is in his visage no great crest of cruelty. Tormentors of fleas! Tormentors of fleas! I would not, by my will, have troubled you. But since you make your pleasure of your pains, I will love her to chide you. I could not stay behind you. My desire, more sharp than filed steel, did spur me forth. And not all love to see you, but jealousy for my befall your travel, being skilled in these parts, which to a stranger, unguided and unfriended, often proved rough and unhospitable. My kind and noble. I can no other answer make, but thanks. And for my word, as is my conscience firm, you shall find better dealing. What's to do? Shall we see the relics of this town? Tomorrow, sir, best first go see your lodging. I'm not weary. It is long tonight, I pray you. Let us satisfy our eyes with the memorials and the things that bring the renown to the city. Would you pardon me? 
I do not without danger walk these streets. Once in a sea fight against the count his galleys, I did some service of such note indeed, that were I take here in this place I shall pay dear. Let them walk no more. No, it doth not fit me. At the south suburbs, at the open is best to lodge. I will bespeak our night dwells. You beguile the time and feed your knowledge of funerals the town. Uh, halt, sir. Here's my purse. Why I your purse? Haply your eye shall light upon some toy you have desired to purchase. I'll be your purse, fair then, and leave you for an hour. To the elephant. I do remember. Oh, you for that night comes. If you desire to sleep, then you will lap yourself in stitches, follow me. Young Gaul Malvolio has turned heathen. <laughs> a very renegado. For there is no Christian that needs to be saved by believing rightly. Could ever believe such impossible passages of grossness. He is in yellow stockings. <laughs> and cross cutters Most villains is oh, Like a pedant that keeps the school in the church. Oh, I have dogged him like his murderer. Mm. He does obey every point of the letter we drop to betray him. He smiles with spaces more of lines than in his new map of occupation of the Indies. <laughs> you have never seen such a thing as this. Oh, I've been holding for very curly things on him. I know my lady will strike him, and if she do, he'll smile and take it for a great favor. <laughs> Come, bring us, bring us where he is. <laughs> there we go. Obstruction in the blood, this cross <laughs> guarding. <laughs> but what of that? If it please the eye of what? It is a thief. As the very true sonnet is, please one and please all. How dost thou, man? <laughs> what is the matter with thee? Not black in my mind, nor yellow in my legs. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it did come to his hands, and command shall be executed. <laughs> <laughs> I think we do know thy sweet Roman hand. Wilt thou go to bed, Malvolio? To bed? Ay, sweetheart. <laughs> and I'll come to thee. Some achieve greatness. What? And some have greatness thrust upon them. 
Right heaven, restore thee! Remember who commanded thy yellow stockings. Yellow stockings? And wish to see thee ever cross garter. Cross garter? Go to, thou art made, if thou desirest to be so. Am I maid? If not, let me see thee as servant still. Why, this is very midsummer madness. Madam, the young gentleman of the cat of Sinos is returned. I could hardly entreat him back. Get under your ladyship's pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come to him. that I may appear stubborn, which she incites me to that in the letter. Cast thy humble slut, <laughs> says she. Be opposite with the kinsman, surely with servants. Let to thy tongue tang with arguments of state. Put thyself into a trick of singularity, and consequently set down the matter how I have lied her. Well, this Jove's doing, and Jove make me thankful. And when she went away now, let this fellow be looked to. Fellow! No Malvolio. But fellow, why, everything adheres together. That no dram of a scruple, no scruple of a scruple, no obstacle, what can be said? Nothing that can be can come between me and the full prospect of my hopes. Well, Joe got eyes the doer of this, and he is to be thanked. <laughs> <laughs> Mad. 
We shall carry it thus for our pleasure and his penance. Let's see. More matter for me, morning. Here's the challenge. Read it. Orange is vinegar and pepper in it. It's so saucy. Aye, it's. I warned him. Do but read. Give me. <laughs> Youth, whatsoever thou art, thou art but a scurvy fellow. Good and valiant. Wonder not, nor admire not in thy mind why I do call thee so, for I will show thee no reason for it. Oh, a good note that keeps you on the good side of the law. Thou comest to the Lady Olivia, and in thy sight she uses thee kindly, but thou liest in thy throat. That is not the matter I challenge thee for. Very free. And to exceeding good sense. <laughs> Bless her. <laughs> I will waylay thee going home, where if it be thy chance to kill me, good. thou killest me like a rogue and a villain. Oh, so you keep on the windy side of the law. Fare <laughs> thee well, and God have mercy upon one of our souls. <laughs> thy friend, as thou usest him, and thy sworn enemy, Andrew Eguchi. <laughs> Oof. It can. If this letter move him not, his legs cannot. I'll give it him. You may have very good occasion for it. He is in commerce with my lady and will by and by the heart. Come. Scout before him at the corner of the orchard like a bum egg. So soon as ever thou seest him, draw. <laughs> and as thou drawest, swear. <laughs> Ah, oh, about it. Nay, let me alone for swearing. Find the Jezebel. Ah! <laughs> now will I not deliver this letter, for the behavior of the young gentleman gives him out to be of good capacity and breeding. His employment between his lord and your niece confirms no less. Therefore, this letter being so excellently ignorant will breed no terror in the youth. You will find it comes from a clod hole. But sir, I will deliver his challenge by word of mm -hmm. mouth. Set upon egg your cheek, a noble report of valor, and drive the young gentleman into the most hideous opinion of his rage, skill, fury, and impetuosity. This will so fright them both that they will kill one another by the look like cockatrices. Here he comes with your niece. Give them wait till he takes leave and presently after him! I, I will meditate the while upon some horrid message for a chance. I have said too much into a heart of stone, and laid mine on a two and cherry out. There is something in me that reproves my fault, and such a headstrong, potent fault it is that it but mocks reproof. With the same behavior that your passion bears goes on my master's grief. <clears throat> Wear this jewel for me. It is my picture. <laughs> Refuse it not. It hath no tongue to vex. And I beseech you come again tomorrow. What will you ask that I shall deny? That honor save me upon asking gift? Nothing but this. Your true love for my master. How? With my honor may I give him that which I have given to you. I will acquit you. Fare thee well. Come again tomorrow. <laughs> A fiend like thee may bear my soul to hell. God save you, gentlemen. And you, sir. <clears throat> On what nature the wrongs are thou hast done him, I know not, but thy interceptor, full of despite, blood as a hunter, I can't see at the orchard end. <laughs> You mistake, sir. I am sure that no man hath any quarrel to me. Oh, you'll find it otherwise, I assure you. Therefore, if you hold your life at any price, be taken to a dark. I pray you, sir, what is he? Oh, he is knighted up with unhatched hatred. Mm -hmm. But he's a very devil in private brawl, mm -hmm. and his incessant at the moment is so implacable that his satisfaction shall be gone. But by pangs of death. 
I will return again into the house and desire some conduct of the lady. I am no fighter. I have heard of some men that put quarrels purposely on others to taste their valor. Be like this is a man of that quirk. Nope, sir, nope. I assure you his indignation derives itself upon a very confident injury. Therefore, get you on and give him his desire. But this is that you shall not into the house. This is as uncivil as strange. I beseech you, do me this courteous <clears throat> office as to know of the knight what my offense to him is. I will do so. Fabian, stay with the gentleman till I return. Pray, sir, do you know of this matter? I know the knight is incensed against you, even to a mortal unfitment. But nothing of the circumstance more. I beseech you, what manner of man is he? Nothing of that wonderful promise to read him by his form as you are like to find him in the proof of his valor. He is indeed, sir, the most skillful, bloody, and fatal opposite that you could possibly have found in any part of Illyria. Will you walk towards him? I will make your peace with him if I can. I shall be much bound to you for it. I am one that had rather go with Sir Priest than Sir Knight. I care not who knows so much of my mettle. Oh, my man, he's a very devil. I have not seen such a virago. Hot son, I'm not meddling with them. <laughs> he cannot now be pacified. Fabian can scarce hold him younger. Pray God, and I thought he had been valiant and so cunning in fights, I would have seen them damned before I would have challenged him. <clears throat> let him, let the matter slip, and I'll give him my horse, Grey Catholic. Stand here. I'll make the motion. Make a good show on it. This shall end without the perdition of souls. <laughs> Mary, I'll ride your horse as well as I ride you. Psst. I thought this horse would take up a quarrel. The youth's a devil. He is as horribly conceited of him. And pants and looks pale as if a day arrived here. No, sir, there is no remedy. He will fight with you for oath's sake. Therefore, drop for the supportness of his vow. He protests he will not hurt you. Oh, great God, defend me! A little thing would make me tell them how much I ought of man. Give ground if you see him furious. Oh, no, stranger. There's no remedy. He will fight with you for honor's sake. But he has protested that he's a gentleman and a soldier. He will not hurt you. Come on! Ah! To it! No. Oh, great God, he keep his oath. Are you sure you can <laughs> get my will? <laughs> Hold up your sword! Huh. If this young gentleman have done offense, I take the fault of me. If you offend him, I for him defy you. Why, sir, <clears throat> what are you? <laughs> One, sir, that for his love there is yet do more than you have heard him brag to do he will. Nay, if you be an undertaker! Then I am for you! Hi! Hey, good to do we hold here! Ah! I pray you, sir, come up your sword if you please. Mary, will I, sir? And for that I promise you, I'll be as good as my word. He bears you these man rings well. This is the man. Do thy office. Antonio, I arrest thee at the suit of Count Orsino. You do mistake me, sir. No, sir, no jot. I know your favor well, though now you have no sea cap on your head. Take him away. He knows I know him well. I must obey. This comes with seeking you, but there's no remedy. Now my necessity makes me to ask you for my purse. <laughs> it grieves me much more for what I cannot do for you than what befalls myself. You stand amazed, but be a convert. Come, sir, away. I must entreat of you some of that money. For what money, sir? For the fair kindness you have shown me, I'll lend you something. Well, my heart is not much. Hold. <laughs> there's half my coffer. Will you deny me now? Do not tempt my misery, lest that it make me so unsound a man as to agree with those kindnesses that I have done for I you. I know of none, nor know I you by voice or any feature. Oh, <coughs> heavens themselves! Come, sir, I pray you go. Let me speak a little. This youth that you see here, I snatched one half out of the jaws of death, and to his image, which me thought did from his most venerable worth, did I devotion. What is that to us? Come, the time goes by. <laughs> but oh, how vile an idol proves this God. Thou hast Sebastian done good feature shame. Come, sir, away. Lead me on.
Methinks his words do from such passion fly, that he believes himself, so do not I. He names Sebastian, I, my brother, know, yet living in my glass, for him I imitate. Oh, if it with tempests are kind, and salt waves fresh in love. Ah, most dishonest, poultry boy, and more coward than a hand. <laughs> for his cowardice, ask Fabian. A coward! A most devout coward. Religious in it. Sly, I'll after him. <coughs> and beat him. Do. Come and sound thee. But never tell thy sword. And I do not. Yeah! Come, let's see the event. I could bet the money would be nothing. Else. <laughs> by my lady to bid you come speak with her, nor your name is not Master Cesario, nor this is not my nose neither. Nothing that is so is so. I pray thee, vent thy folly somewhere else. Thou knowest not me. <laughs> vent my folly? He has heard that word of some great man, and now applies it to a fool. Vent my folly. I pray thee now, I've heard thy strangeness, and tell me what I shall vent to my lady. Shall I vent to her that thou art coming? I pray thee. Foolish Greek, depart from me. There's money for thee. <laughs> if you tarry longer, I shall give worse payment. By my troth, thou hast an open hand. These wise men that give fools money get themselves a good report. I report to you purchase. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> now, sir, I have met you again. There's for you. Why, there's the thing! What's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? Hold, sir, or I'll throw your dagger over the house. This will I tell my lady straight. I would not be in some of your coats for two pence. Come on, sir. Nay, let him alone. I'll go another way to work with him. I have an action of battery against him. If there's any law in there yet. No, I struck him first. Yet there's no matter for that. Let's go, thy hand! Come, sir, hold. Come, my young soldier, hold. put up your iron. I will be free. <laughs> what wouldst thou now? If thou darest tempt me, further draw thy sword. What? what? Nay, then I must have an answer for this time. Oh, sir, tell me! Would I like my church be hold? Madam. Will it ever be thus, ungracious wretch, fit for the mountains and the barbarous caves, where manners never preached out of my sight? Be not offended, dear Cesario. Ruth, be, be gone! I pray thee, gentle friend, let thy fair wisdom, not thy passion, sway in this uncivil and unjust extent against thy peace. Come with me to my house, and hear there thou how many fruitless rites this ruffian hath botched up, so that thou mayst smile at this. <laughs> you shall not choose but go. Do not deny me. This through his soul for me that started one poor heart in thee. <laughs> What relish is in this? How runs the stream? Cry mad, this is a dream. <laughs> if he thus to dream, still let me sleep. They come. I pray thee, wouldst thou be ruled by me? Madam, I will. <laughs> oh, say so, and so be.
put this gown in beard. Make him believe that you are Sir Topaz the curate. Do it quickly. I'll hold the trophy to watch. Well, I'll put it on. And I will dissemble myself in it. I'm not tall enough to become the function well, nor lean enough to be thought a good student. The competitors enter. Joe, bless thee, Master Parson.
you to it. But tell me true, are you not mad indeed, or do you but counterfeit? Believe me, I thought, I tell you true. Madman, I'll never believe a madman till I see his brains. I will bet you like and pay for anything. Oh, I'll requite it till I agree. I pray be gone. I am gone, sir, and anon, sir, I'll be with you again. So far exceed all instance, all discourse, that I am ready to distress mine eyes and wrangle with my reason that persuades me to any other trust but that I am mad. Or else the lady's mad. Yet, for so she cannot sway her house. Command her followers, taking it back affairs and their dispatch with such a smooth, discreet, and stable bearing as I perceive she does. There's something in it that is deceivable. Here, the lady comes. Let your flesh and blood obey it. 
well, I will be so much a sinner to be a double dealer. There's another. Primo secundo. Tercio is a good play. And the old saying is the third pays for all. The triplex, sir, is a good tripping measure. You can fool no more money out of me at this throw. You let your lady know I'm here to speak with her and bring her along with you. It may await my bounty further. Merry sir, a lullaby to your bounty till I come again. I go, sir. Let your bounty take a nap. I shall await it anon. Whoop! <laughs> Here comes the man, sir, that did rescue me. That face of his I do remember well. Yet when I saw it last, it was besmeared as black as Vulcan in the smoke of war. What's the matter? Lucio, this is that Antonio that did the tiger board when your young nephew Titus lost his leg. Here in the streets he'd be apprehended. He did me kindness, sir, drew on my side, but in conclusion put strange speech upon me. No trouble. Thou salt water thief. What foolish boldness brought thee to thine enemies? Orsino, noble sir, be pleased that I shake off these names you give me. Antonio never yet was thief or pirate, though I confess on basing ground enough Orsino's enemy. A witchcraft drew me hither. That most ungrateful boy there by your side from the rude seat, enraged and foamy mouth, did I redeem. A wreck, past hope he was. His life I gave him, and did thereto add my love, without pretension or restraint. For his sake did I expose myself, pure for his love, into the dangers of this adverse town. Drew to defend him when he was beset, where, being apprehended, his false cunning denied me my own curse which I recommended to his use not half an hour before. And how can this be? When came he to this town? Today, my lord. Ha. And for two months before, both day and night, did we keep company. Here comes the countess. Now heaven walks on earth. <laughs> but to thee, fellow. Fellow, thy words are madness. Two months this youth hath tended upon thee. Take him aside. What would my lord but that he may not have? Cesario, you do not keep promise with me. Madam. Gracious What say you, Cesario? Good, my lord. My lord would speak, my duty hushes me. If it be aught to the old tune, my lord, it is as fat and fulsome to mine ear as howling after music. Still so cruel. Still so constant, lord. What? To pervert you, you uncivil lady. Whose ingrate and inauspicious altars my soul, the faithfulest offerings, have breathed out that ever devotion tender? What shall I do? Even what it please my lord that shall become him. Why should I not? I die the heart to do. Kill what I love. A savage jealousy that sometimes savors nobly. But hear this. Since you to non regardance cast my fate, and that I partly know the instrument that screws me from my true place in your favor, live you the marble breasted tyrant? Still, but this, your minion, whom I know you love, and whom by heaven I swear I tender dearly, him will I tear out of that cruel eye where he sits crowned in his master's spite. Come, boy, with me. My thoughts are right in mischief. And I most jocund apt and willingly to do you rest a thousand deaths would die. Where goes Cesario? After am I not? More than my life, more by all mores than ever shall I love wife. I be detested! How you beguiled! Who does beguile you? Who does you wrong?
Sarah. No, my lord, not I. <laughs> not wholly a, a, it is the basis of that fear that makes me strangle and confine. Fear not, Cesare, hold thy fortune up. Oh, oh welcome, Father. Father, I charge thee by thy reverence here to unfold what thou dost know hath duly passed between this youth and me. A contract of eternal bond of love, <laughs> confirmed by the mutual joint of your hands, attested by the holy close of lips, sh strengthened by the interchangement of rings. O oh, thou dissembling cup! What wilt thou be when time has so to grizzle on thy case? Farewell. And take her, but direct thy feet where thou and I henceforth may never meet. My lord, I do protest. Oh! Oh, do not swear. A little faith of thou has too much fear. <laughs> Sir Toby a blind coxcomb too, for the love of God, your help. Who hath done this, Sir Andrew? The Count Stellner, once Cesario, we took him for a coward, we the very devil incarnate. My gentleman, Cesario. Oh, <laughs> Here he is now. He had broke my head across him for that, that I was set on to do by Sir Toby. Why do you speak to me? I never hurt you. You drew your sword upon me without cause, but I have spoken fair and hurt you not. If a bloody coxcomb be a hurt, you have hurt me. I think you said nothing by a bloody coxcomb. No. Oh. Here comes Sir Toby, halting. You shall hear more. <laughs> How now, cousin? How is he? That's all. He's hurt me, and that's the end of it. Stop. Did see the surgeon saw it. Oh, he's drunk, Sir Toby, an hour gone. His eyes were set at eight in the morning. <laughs> then he's a rogue, and I hate a drunken rogue. Get him away. Who hath made this havoc with them? I'll help you, Sir Toby, because we'll be dressed together. Will you help? Go on, nigger. That's it. Go. Get him to Turn bed, out. and let his hurt be looked to. Oh, I'm sorry, madam, I have hurt your kinsman. You have strange regard upon me, and by that I do perceive I have offended you. Pardon me, sweet water, even for the vows we made each other but so late to come. One face, one voice, one habit, but two persons. Antonio? Oh, my dear Antonio, how the hours have wrapped and tortured me since I have lost thee. Sebastian, are you? Hearst thou that, Antonio? How have you made division of yourself? <laughs> An apple cleft in two is no more twin than these two creatures. Which is Sebastian? Most wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Do I stand there? I never had a brother. I had a sister. In the blind ways and searches have to What charity, what kin are you to me? Oh, Messaline! Sebastian was my father, such as Sebastian was my brother too, so went he suited to his watery tomb. If spirits can assume both suit and form, you have come to fright us. The spirit I am indeed. <laughs> the word of a woman, as the rest goes even. I should let my tears fall upon your cheek and say, Rice, welcome, Joan of Fiona. My father had rolled upon his brow. And so had mine. And died that day when Viola was from her birth and numbered thirteen years. Oh, the record is lively in my soul. Oh. If nothing like to make us happy both, but this my masculine usurp attire, we do not depart into which circumstance of place, time, and fortune do cohere and jump. That I and Viola can be stand with help. I was preserved to serve this noble count. All the occurrence of my fortune since hath been between this lady and that lord. So comes up, lady. <laughs> you have been mistook. You would have been contracted to a maid. 
nor are you therein by my life to see. Your betrothed both to a maid and a man. Do not a maid. Right noble is his blood. And if this be so, as yet. The glass seems true. I shall have share in this most happy race. <laughs> Boy, thou hast said to me a thousand times, thou never shouldst love a woman like to me. And all those sayings will I overswear. Give me thy hand, and let me see thee in thy woman's weeds. The captain that to bring me first on shore half my maid's garments. We shall enlarge him. Set Babel be okay. And yet, alas, now I remember me. They say, poor gentlemen, he must distress. How does he, Sirrah? Truly, madam, he holds Belzebub at the stage then, as well as a man in his case may do, has here written a letter to you. Open it and read it. Look then to be well edified when the fool delivers the madman. <laughs> By the Lord, madam, madam, now, art thou mad? No, madam, I do but read madness, and your ladyship will have it as it ought to be. You must allow box. Pretty read in thy right wit. So I do, madam. But to read his right wit is to read thus. Therefore, perpend, my princess, and give ear. By the Lord, that <laughs> See the delivered fade the infection hither. My lord, so please you be states further thought on. To think me a sister as well wife. We shall crown the alliance, aunt. Here, at my house, and at my proper cost. Madam, <laughs> I most have to embrace your offer. Your master quits you, and for your service done him, so much against the metal of your sex, so far beneath your soft and tender breeding. Mm. And since you are my master for so long, here's my hand. You shall, from this time, be your master's. A sister, you are she. <laughs> 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 Is this the madman? Ah, uh, my lord, the same. How now, my volume? Madam, you have done me wrong. Victorious wrong? Have I, my volume? No. Lady, you have. Pray you peruse that letter. You must not now deny it is your hand. And tell me, in the modesty of honor, why you have given me such clear lights of favor. Baby me come smiling and cross garter to you to put on yellow stockings. And to frown upon Sir Toby and the lighter people. <laughs> and acting this in an obedient hope. Why? You have suffered me to be imprisoned, kept in a dark house, visited by the priests, and made the most victorious kick and golden egg that she played on. <laughs> Tell me why. <laughs> <laughs> Alas, Malvolio, tis not my writing. <gasps> and though much like the character, I do confess, pretty be content. This practice hath most shrewdly passed on you. But when we will know the grounds and authors of it, thou will be the judge of thine own cause. Good madam, hear me speak. Most freely I confess. Good madam, hear me speak. And let no quarrel nor no brawl taint the condition of this present hour, which I have wondered at. In hopes it shall not, most freely I confess, in hopes it shall not. <laughs> Most really I confess, I myself set this device against Malvolio here. Where I conceived the letter, at my great import, in recompense of her out. I've married her. Oh. How with a sportful malice it was followed, may rather pluck on laughter than revenge. If that the injuries be just the way that have on both sides passed. Alas, poor fool, how they have baffled me. Why, some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrust upon them. <laughs> I was one, sir, in this interlude, one Sir Topa, sir. But that's all one. By the Lord, fool, I am not mad! <laughs> and thus the whirly gig of time brings in his revenges. <laughs> I'll be revenged! On the whole pack of you! <laughs> <laughs>
Let time and care and take you to a peace. <clears throat> Meantime, sweet sister, we will not part from hence, as I will come, for we shall be blind to our man. But when in other habits you are seen, or seen of mistress, and his fancy's queen. Oh, oh, oh. the dancer! Hey! <laughs>